thing. This is the new Breville 1000. <laughs> this beautiful stainless steel finish will not only make your kitchen look good, but it also Three makes good look coffee. <laughs> Alright, first thing we're going to talk about is the water reservoir, because without water you won't be able to do anything. It's on the back here, there's a handle that just lifts up, and the whole thing lifts straight up, comes off, off of the posts in the back. Now this little thing in here is a, a water filter, and you're supposed to change it every two months, and you have to order those online. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, if you look at it this way, although you can't see it because of the condensation, it's set on two, which is February. That's when you should change it, if you want to change it at all. So just pull this off and fill it up to the max line, and put it back on. Just make sure it's seated down into the um, reservoir hole. Alternatively, you can just lift this up and pour a bottle of water in to fill it up. But just make sure it doesn't go below the minimum line. You'll know when you're out of water because nothing will be coming out. Okay. Right now we have the grind amount uh, set pretty well. Uh, if you find that you're getting too much coffee coming out, it's piling up and flowing over then you can adjust it to less or if you want more you can go more this is your coffee bean hopper and it holds up to half a pound and when it gets low just check it and put more beans in there this should keep it pretty fresh for a while with this uh, rubber lid over on the left hand side is the grind consistency you pull it toward yourself for a coarse, more coarse grind, or push it away toward the wall for a very fine grind. You want it more fine than coarse. If it's too coarse, the water is just going to run right through the grounds that's in the portable, or they call this, um, I'll have to look up the word. But it, it's set on number two, and that's probably pretty good. I think it's number two. One is the finest and 14 is the coarsest and set on two. It is an automatic grinder depending on if you select filter size single or filter size double. It will grind the correct amount of, uh, of beans that you want according to what you set it at. This right here is a, a double filter and it doesn't come out real easy, which is good. You don't want to fall out and this is the single here this weekend with a lot of people and a lot of people liking coffee you probably just want to stay with the double shots um, unless you find that you're getting too jacked up during the day and you want to go with the, the single and it just pops pops right in if you do the single just make sure that you change your your filter size here just by pushing this button filter size and it tells the hopper how wh whether to do a a one shot or a double shot. But we're gonna do a double shot today. Let's do that. You can rest your, um, what is the name of this thing? What, are, what should we call it? Thingamabob. The thingamabob. <laughs> it can just rest here like this when you're not using it, but it might kind of be in the way. Uh, it'll typically be clean when you're not using it. You can just rest it right there with the filter. Yeah, we'll call it a filter, portable, portable filter basket. Sure. And you can just keep your um, frothing pitcher out of the way like that. So let's go ahead. There is a button. I don't, you probably can't see it, but there's a button right back here. Um, and that's what this piece will depress in order to um, automatically start. You just give it a click forward. It's kind of flopping over the side a little bit, but that's that's okay. I, I made it to where it wouldn't overflow too much. The tamper is right here. It's held magnetically in this little hole. Holds it nice and sturdy, nice and safe. You just pull it out. And one of the main things you want is really good tamping. So I set this on the counter and hold it. 
it'll be supported by these very um, strong metal spouts and then just tamp. You are going to get overspill, but that's fine. <laughs> and just tamp it. Don't be afraid to push too hard. And then the machine comes with this razor, but even Paxton and I are finding that if, if you use this to, to even it out, you just lose all the grounds you just put in there. So I don't know if it's necessary. Just with your finger, just wipe the rim so that when you put it in the dispenser that you'll be able to get a good seal. Put it in where it says insert. That's at about, was it six, seven, that's about eight o'clock. And then turn it toward lock and it's gonna go to about five o'clock. Not straight toward you because there's still a little bit of room to lock it in. Let's get a cup. And go ahead and make in some coffee. Espresso. Espresso, yeah. Here's the single cup serving in the double cup. What you do is you push and hold, and you'll see the uh, espresso start coming out. Continue to hold it for just a couple of seconds. This needle will move up a little bit, and once you see that needle move, you can release it. Let's see if it does that. We've been having a little bit of issue getting the pressure up into the optimum range, which is right about here. We're just barely getting it uh, to this point, and I'm not sure if uh, what, what the issue is with that. It could be our grind, could be we're not tamping enough and there are not enough pressures building up, or we're just not uh, holding the button long enough. I'm not quite sure. Push and hold. See the needle move. Nice black, rich espresso coming out. And I'm going to go ahead and release it at this point, and it'll pop up, giving you more pressure. And again, it's making a decent espresso. Uh, the pressure is just not quite building up enough, but that's looking pretty decent. There is a way to program how much water will come through on a single shot or a double shot. There's probably a little more water than necessary, but um, I think it's, I think it's going to be adequate. I'm going to pull this out and let you see that that's a that's a double shot. You can see the the crema on there is pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty pretty nice. Now we're using Christmas blend, which isn't typically something you use for espresso. Uh, an espresso roast is probably best for this machine, unless that's too strong for you. You can go down to something that's a little uh, a little less bold. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to hit pause, or should we just go, ahead and go straight to the frothing? Go ahead and go to frothing. We're going to go straight to the frothing. Um, the depending cameras on much, are here, by the way. Depending on. The, Depending on how much steam milk or froth you want, um, I've been filling this up about halfway, just under halfway. To build it up too much, um, when it starts to froth, it'll go to the top and start overflowing before you get the nice thick consistency. So sometimes uh, for the frothing, less is more. That's probably a, a good amount to get a nice thick uh, froth. It, it, much more milk than that, and it's going to be a little more runny, I think. But you can always experiment different amounts. Over here on this side is the steam switch and the hot water. You can run hot water through this little knob for Americanos or even hot tea. You just turn it this way and it'll come out in just a couple of seconds. And that's hot water. It comes straight out the spout. When you uh, start to steam, make sure the steam tip is toward the tray. When you turn it to steam, most of the time you're going to get water discharge, so make sure it's over the drip tray. Sometimes it'll start steaming right away, but whichever case, once it starts steaming, just like that, you turn it to standby so you can get your frothing pitcher underneath, and then turn it back to steam. 
and you have to do it within eight seconds or you're going to lose your pressure in your hot water. Like I think I just did. <laughs> so I'm going to do that again. Turn it to steam. It discharges some water. All right, now it's now it's steaming. Turn it to standby. There we go. This also is a little bit by feel. You, you want to have the tip under there, under the milk about about an inch and a half or two, I think, until it starts going in a vortex. And I think it's a clockwise rotation. When it gets that real high squeal, go ahead and pull your pitcher down and have the tip just below the surface. You can kind of move it up and down a little bit if you want to get some good action. If it's too low for you, this adjusts. Sometimes I like to put the wand back into the milk just to make sure it's going to all be hot enough. And then bring it down just below the surface. And as you can see, it's starting to get to the top. And before it bubbles over, just turn it back to standby. Keep, keep the pitcher there until for about three seconds. And you'll hear the wand kind of stop. And there's your, there's your broth. Let's see how that came out. We do it like a latte. Hold the spoon there. Pour it in and then ladle on your foam. Or you can spoon out the foam and do more of a cappuccino. But I think that came out pretty nice. And there you go. We're not done yet because a very important thing is the care and condition of your machine. So we've got to clean the machine, mainly so the spray nozzle, the frothing nozzle, doesn't wand, frothing wand doesn't get uh, dirty. So any kind of uh, towel will do. You might want to pick which towel you're always going to use so that um, somebody's not wiping down a table with milk saturated a towel. Just dampen a towel, rub your wand in there. And then give it a little, um, couple of seconds to, to clear the wand. There you go. That way it won't get clogged up. Now we need to get rid of the ground. Just turn it to the left. Make the loud noise to knock it out. Okay, it's a trash can. The product placement? Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing should just pop out. You can rinse it if you want, but if it comes out that clean, you probably don't have to. But I'm going to go ahead and just run it through like that. You could probably take the filter basket out, but I think it'll be clean. We're going to use it a lot today, so that'll be fine. We're just going to place that there to get it out of the way. This entire tray pulls out. Um, the neat feature about this, a lot of water will go into here when you're clearing the wand after you make um, a coffee. The, the machine itself will discharge a little bit um, into the back, this back hole. Um, it will discharge some water, so this will begin to fill up. The neat thing, if you don't want to rinse it every time, there's a little gizmo under here that will float to the top and pop out. It says empty me. So if there's a lot of liquid in there, it'll just pop right up. And you see it will come through this little hole. But I've been rinsing it out, pouring it out the whole time, just so to speak.
this whole tray comes out. And you can just rinse it just like that. If you have a lot of grounds underneath, take off the silver tray. Give it a good rinse. See that empty me thing? Let's test it. Let's fill this up and see if it does float up. It's supposed to. Otherwise, I don't know why it's there. There it is. There, empty me. Empty me. I'm filling up. I'm filling up. That's a neat feature. If you forget to empty it, it'll, uh, it'll tell you when it's ready. Back here is a little, a little tray to hold the cleaning tools. I haven't put them in there, um, but that's where you can store them. Tool storage tray. This goes in the back. You have to rinse your pitcher. And... Alright, I think that about does it. If you have any questions, call 1 800 Breville Help. 1 800 Breville Help. And we'll be sure to get you on your way to a great tasting espresso or cappuccino. Enjoy! Cheers.